Hey gang, welcome back. We're having a quick look at Access Empires, Total of Krieg. I'm sure you could do that with a fancy German accent and make it sound awesome. It's from Decision Games. It's one of those large format boxes and uh, comes with two or three counter sheets and whatnot. I haven't really done a shrink rip on this at all. I just wanted to sort of jump in and have a bit of a play with it. It's a substantial game, I guess. You know, you've got 60 plus pages of rules. Let's see where we are. Yeah, 64 by the time it's all done with designer notes and all that sort of fun stuff, plus a scenario book and all that sort of good stuff. And uh, it, it's really a, a pretty well done rule book overall. I've met Thomas Prowl a couple of times. And what I didn't know was that uh, Salvatore uh, Vasta was also involved in the design of this, which I believe he uh, designed Unconditional Surrender. So he obviously has a, a big interest in strategic warfare in World War II. So uh, what I thought I would do, uh, since it is such a large rule book and it has a, <clears throat> a structured learning process to it, uh, that's available. I thought I'd have a look at the Poland scenario. And, and you know, most of the time, these things are more of a little puzzle scenario. And indeed, uh, this is one of those things. Uh, so you're all set up and they give you all the instructions and you have a look at the sequence of play and you have a look at, uh, you skim through the two or three rule sections they tell you to read completely, which I think is uh, uh, zones of control and maybe stacking or something like that. And uh, then you need to look at, uh, as you play, it's got a list of rules you should read as you play. And then the access basically get one full turn to see if they can capture Warsaw, Krakow, and Posen. And if they do that, they win. If they don't, they lose. So you get these, uh, so you get the, that's the scenario. And you, you know, set your forces up and you get after it and see what happens. The... I think the lesson to be learned here is pretty straightforward. How to do combat. How to do combat in a sequence. Uh, so there's uh, the concept of the there's two combat phases in a turn. There's the blitz combat phase, and then there's the regular combat phase. Um, before you do either of those, of course, you move. And it uh, the reason why you need to read the zone of control rules is that zones of control are, are negatable. So you've got uh, these guys here in a line. Uh, there was an enemy unit here. I'm just going to put them down. This may not be the actual actual strengths of the units that were there, but it's close enough. And what you need to do is, Nick, you, you start the game with six of these uh, breakdown units, and breakdown is one of the first things you'll you'll do before you move. And you really need to, if you're following the sequence of play strictly, you'll need to break down your units before you start moving. I'm playing solo, we kind of kind of did it as we went along, <laughs> just because we would have to reset every time. So after a little look at the board, you realize that uh, based on how the zones of control work, there really is no way to get to Warsaw because of the zones of control that were set up. You could get this guy here, but none of these guys could get in. And if you were going to uh, come in and try and attack from Konigsberg to here, you were really uh, looking at having a three to two, there's a two factor in here, three to two defense. What was this guy here? Three to two defense. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, combat result, which was going to be ugly, right? Uh, given that Warsaw would probably get uh, the benefit of uh, a column shift for being a city and all that sort of fun stuff. So even if you put air on it, you know, the best you're going to do is probably get it up to one to one or something like that. And one to one combat result is is going to end up being ugly, and you're not going to get the defender retreats that you're looking for. So what to do? And that's where you realize that you need to take advantage of these breakdown units. As you put down, uh, you uh, break down a unit here. He can move into this hex and stop and then the next guy can move into here uh, the zone of enemy zone of control is negated you can move to here stop and then the next guy can come through and you can finally get an armored unit to all well, these guys to here and then i put an armored unit all the way here 
and that allowed me to get uh you know get surround warsaw you know just best practices uh <laughs> surround warsaw get these two guys there and then have enough factors to take on take on warsaw you get two bites of the cherry though as well uh so that's uh, that's something else to consider and when you put these uh chits down these blitz chits it has a unique effect, which is a kind of a clever way to uh, allocate the focus of your your army's efforts. So you put this down. I could choose not to put it in a city if I wanted to. I could have put it down in here, for instance, and that would have given me a broader range of choices. But if I put it here, any unit within two hexes that uh, is involved in a combat with an armored unit can attack in the blitz phase and we can attack Krakow and knock it out, which is what we did. And then uh, I can attack Warsaw and uh, chip away at it. And then when it comes to the next combat phase, if it's the regular combat phase after that, I'll have a second chance to fight here again and finish off uh, the Polish if they were still there. But in this particular instance, you'll notice it says uh, open city in this hex. So I put this here. What that does is it forces the uh, forces the defender to uh, retreat or so is a retreat or take losses. Now I now I forgot what it says. I was going to be so well informed and explain all this to you, like I knew what the hell I was talking about. Let's go to the retreat section here, and I'll tell you what it says. Yeah, it's this concept of voluntary retreat conversion. So a defending force may convert retreat results into step losses and stay, right? So the defender, the only exception to that is the defending hex contains a city and does not contain... Oh, is that right? Oh, I'm reading that as an exception. So basically, <laughs> basically you can choose to take step losses instead of retreating. And we didn't want that to happen here just in case we rolled something like a DR1 and we didn't get any attrition loss in the combat result. And there were, this guy has two steps. So we, we wanted to make sure that we got a two-step result here. So we put the blitz marker here. Right, so you run through this blitz combat and do that. And then you have the opportunity to use uh, air in your combats and you also have the ability to use uh, your HQs which can uh, throw uh, or uh, provide a ranged support to you in the form of a column shift as the air is as well and you can pile in benefits. Now the way I read the HQ rules if I don't use my combat factor so if I had to use my combat factor here I could not use ranged combat more than once whether that was for this attack or any other but that's kind of how i was reading the rule anyway uh, but if i didn't use the combat factor i could use range to support for multiple attacks in a turn which you know arguably felt okay to me and sounded about right so we that's how i played it anyway uh and it, in this combat here it didn't add any value to use the uh, the combat value of the HQ because it didn't move us through one of the columns on the CRT. And I'll show you the CRT in a sec. But we basically ended up having uh, Krakow. We ended up with a 3 to 1 attack and got a DR2 with no attrition result, no step losses. So they had to retreat two hexes, 1, 2, and that allowed us to advance into the hex and take that hex. Uh, in the blitz phase, in this blitz phase here, I believe we ended up with re. Where is it? Uh, possibly a four to one. Roll the three, and we got a dr one and a uh, a one attrition for the defender. So that meant that because we put the blitz marker down here, we were going to force two step losses. Uh, right. Yeah, two, we're going to force two step losses, so the dude, the dude would be out of there. Even either way, he he wouldn't he wouldn't have had a place to retreat. Maybe he could have retreated to there, but they would have wanted to take the step losses and try and stay. Net of it is, I think, is the Warsaw was successfully taken. So whatever happened, happened. Then we go to the combat phase, the next, the regular combat phase, 
and we ran a uh, an attack on Posen that ended up being. I believe a four to one and dropping down to a three to one because of the city. And that ended up with a DR two. And so those guys had to retreat uh, to, they couldn't really retreat to. So they, we, we ended up, uh, they were eliminated. Uh, and regardless of whether they were eliminated or not, they would have ended up, uh, the, the Germans would capture this, this hex here. Um, you can tell how, how detailed I got with the rules reading on, on what to do with retreats, but the, the fact remained that we, we captured the hex. All right, so that was kind of the, the combats that went down. Now, the interesting thing is, you know, you attempted then to, in the regular combat phase, since I still had these units here, I could roll and attack this guy at five to one. Well, <laughs> at five to one, there's a chance that you can take a step loss. In fact, there are multiple chances of taking a step loss. So I didn't do that. Because I'm sure, as in any strategic level game, it's reasonably difficult to get replacements and uh, you want to husband your resources. So we would let the turn play out. I'm sure perhaps the maybe the Polish, then that's the end of the scenario, right? So the Polish don't get to respond in this particular case. But if it was the full campaign, they would potentially have a chance to respond if they, if they, if they didn't collapse uh, based on the fact that all their cities were captured. So played out pretty well. Uh, uh, very straightforward rules. Interesting little puzzle to solve in terms of using breakdown units and using the combination of the, the one-two punch with the blitz attack and the regular combat. So we'll uh, probably get this set up and have a look at a larger scenario, maybe Barbarossa or something like that, moving on as we kind of get to get our feet wet. But I'm um, more interested in getting into the political aspects of this and having a look at the the lead up to the war, 37 onwards, and seeing what uh, what transpires and understand whether this is a history on rails type of thing or whether we could have some unusual occurrences, unusual but plausible alternative history tracks. So we'll see what happens. Hope you enjoyed that quick little look at Axis Empires, Portal Krieg.